Hello, I am Dean Potter, and I am a pediatric surgeon at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, as a pediatric surgeon, I perform surgery on children, and one of my major focuses is uh, inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, inflammatory bowel disease, as you probably already know, uh, encompasses two major diseases. Uh, the first is uh, ulcerative colitis, and the second is Crohn's disease. And what I'd like to do today is just briefly talk uh, a little bit about uh, surgical management of people, our children, with uh, ulcerative colitis today. Um, ulcerative colitis is a disease that uh, uh, involves inflammation mostly of the colon, but also joints uh, and other parts of the body. Uh, but today I would like to focus on the management of the GI tract or the colon. Uh, a surgery uh, usually gets involved with uh, ulcerative colitis after medications have uh, failed to control uh, your disease and the symptoms. Uh, there are many diseases, or many uh, medications that can be used for this disease, uh, usually steroids, immunomodulators, uh, followed by biologics such as Remicade and some of the newer medications. And if your gastroenterologists have prescribed these medications and they're just not getting the job done, uh, you continue to be miserable, have bleeding, uh, lots of diarrhea, many bowel movements per day, then surgery becomes an option uh, for you uh, as a child. Uh, older patients, adults, uh, can develop um, malignancy in their colon, and that would be an indication. However, uh, that is incredibly rare in uh, children, and in general, we don't deal with that. So in children with ulcerative colitis, once they've failed medical management or they've decided they did not want to try any uh, new medications, then surgery is really uh, their final option. And that involves uh, essentially removal of the colon uh, and eventually the rectum. And depending on uh, how uh, sick you might be, uh, the reconstruction, the removal and reconstruction can be performed in one operation, uh, two operations or three operations, and we refer to those operations as stages. So a one stage, two stage, or a three stage uh, colectomy with reconstruction. Uh, in general, uh, for patients with ulcerative colitis or people with ulcerative colitis, uh, we do not offer a one stage uh, operation because in general the medications and the uh, malnutrition and the general health status is not uh, good enough to allow for a single operation. So in general, we are looking at a two-stage or a three-stage procedure. Now, depending on how, how sick you are, uh, if you're very sick in the hospital, unable to eat for a period of time, then we tend to, to use a three-stage procedure. And what that involves is, is removal of the colon, uh, with leaving the rectum inside and having an ileostomy for a period of time, say two, three, four, five, six months, depending on how long it takes you to get healthy. Following that, uh, we would do a second stage procedure, which is removal of the rectum, creation of something called an ileal pouch, uh, which acts as a new colon or rectum, which uh, uh, stores your stool, uh, and then put that to the bottom. Uh, that is usually followed by an ileostomy again for two months, and the third operation is takedown of the ileostomy. Now, some patients are healthy enough to have that performed in two stages. So the first operation is, re again, removal of the colon, but also removal of the rectum, then creation of the ileal pouch with an uh, ileostomy for approximately two to three months, and takedown of that ileostomy for the second operation, and then you'll be using your pouch. Uh, this operation uh, has been performed at Mayo Clinic since uh, 1980, uh, so we have a long history with this procedure, um, and uh, we do it very well. Um, we uh, have looked at our results, and uh, in general, patients that have had an ileal pouch for chronic ulcerative colitis have about five to six bowel movements, uh, usually five during the day and one at night. Uh, they almost never have incontinence unless they're sick, such as a gastroenteritis or other problem. Uh, and in general, they can control their stool and they can live a normal life. Um, we've looked at their um, quality of life indices, such as going to school, having a job, participating in sports, uh, sex life, and all of these uh, parameters of quality of life get better um, after uh, a surgical procedure and you get used to using your pouch uh, over a period of time. 
Um, with such a large surgery, there are potential complications. Uh, you know, infections do happen, and sometimes uh, it takes a while to get over an infection before we can do the next stage of the operation. But in general, almost all of those problems are manageable, and eventually you can get to the point where uh, you are using your GI tract uh, normally uh, for someone that has an ileal pouch. Um, other issues to think about. Um, uh, regarding an ileal pouch is uh, sexual function. Uh, we've uh, begun looking at uh, long-term sexual function in patients. Uh, women that have uh, ulcerative colitis and have an ileal pouch are able to have children uh, and they can have, have a child either vaginally or have cesarean section and see minimal change in their pouch function, pouch function long-term. Uh, males uh, are able to uh, have children as well or, or uh, uh, become fathers. Uh, they don't have issues with uh, ejaculation, uh, issues like that. So all in all, it's a, it's a good option for patients that have a disease that is not well controlled with medications or if they do not want to take medications long term. Uh, it's a durable, effective solution uh, for those people.